Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In setting maxillary and mandibular uh, zero-degree teeth to a balanced concept, we must be concerned both with arch arrangement and with the anterior-posterior and compensating curves. We have set the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth for our patient and are prepared to begin setting the posterior teeth. The second bicuspid is the tooth that we will begin with, and that second bicuspid usually is positioned off the distal of the cuspid and directed towards the retromolar pad. After positioning the tooth, you will notice that the tooth is a little bit too high uh, for the uh, tentative plane of occlusion coming from this cuspid uh, moving back to an area approximately two millimeters, be millimeters below the retromolar pad. So I'm going to take and grind this tooth uh, slightly with a heatless stone and prepare the undersurface uh, of the uh, tooth. We can grind this very carefully remove some of this, maintaining the ridge lap character to the tooth, and yet not losing uh, too much of the clinical length of the tooth. Now we can go back and reposition that tooth distal to the cuspid. Warm the wax with the hot end of the number seven spatula, and position the the bicuspid. Now with the tooth in that relationship, you now see that we are more towards the lingual and uh, more in line with the uh, mandibular uh, cuspid. We can seal the tooth and then I think look at the tooth from the buckle to uh, see its relationship uh, with the tentative clusal plane. Now with the tooth positioned, you will notice now that uh, as we pro proceed posteriorly, that we have the beginning of our compensating curve. The occlusal surface of this tooth should be uh, flat, and then beginning with the molar, we will start the incline uh, to the compensating curve. In the frontal view, you will notice that the buccal cusp is a little bit more prominent than is the lingual cusp. The lingual cusp being a little bit recessed, and as you can see, you, you uh, are unable to see it clearly on the picture. And this is the proper position for the bicuspid. Now I'm going to seal that, and then we'll move on and set the first molar. Again, we'll examine the molar in relationship to the bicuspid. Looking at it from this direction, you will see that we are fairly well lined up with the, uh, with the bicuspid. It appears as though our compensating curve medial laterally can be accentuated a little bit by just making the buccal cusp a little bit more prominent. Now again, looking from the uh, buccal view, you will see that the meso of the tooth is a little bit too high. I'm gonna recess that a little bit. There we are. And now the distal begins to incline towards the posterior part of the mouth. Again, looking at it from the occlusal view, you will notice that the uh, tooth proceeds down from the cuspid towards the retromolar pad uh, evenly uh, with ridge structure to the buccal uh, and to the lingual. It looks as though we're a little bit moving a little bit too much towards the lingual. I'm going to just rotate the tooth out slightly, close it up. It gives you a better idea of the relationship. Now we can go ahead and seal that tooth in position in preparation for setting the second molar. Seal the pink base wax, both the buccal and the lingual, and now position the second molar. Again, the second molar should be tight to the first molar and the meso of the second molar at the height of the distal of the second molar of the first molar with 
the compensating curve being established both medial laterally and anterior posteriorly. Again, as we look at this in the frontal view, you'll see that the tooth is needs to be altered slightly, making the buccal cusp a little bit more prominent. While from the buccal, again, the mesial is a little too high. We'll just recess the mesial slightly. And now you can see that we are flat here, beginning to incline with the first molar, and then a very subtle inclination to the anterior posterior uh, uh, compensating curve. Now we'll seal this tooth and again, examine it from the occlusal relationship to make sure that we are evenly positioned along the residual ridge, as you can see uh, in this particular view. At this point, I think we're ready now to uh, go ahead and to set the maxillary first molar to determine if the amount of compensating curve that we have established uh, is adequate. If not, uh, we will then, of course, rearrange these three mandibular posterior teeth. We will position the uh, molar uh, in its uh, proximate relationship to the cuspid, uh, leaving uh, space for the bicuspid, and then close the articulator into its relationship with the lower molar. Very carefully tease the tooth into position. It's not uh, essential that a class one uh, molar relationship uh, be established here, but um, uh, if possible, uh, one should uh, strive for that relationship. Now we'll seal the tooth on the buckle and then begin to examine what happens to that molar as we move the articulator uh, through its various excursions. Now, We'll loosen the condylar mechanism of the articulator and then very carefully tipping it up, move the articulator into a protrusive movement. Again, loosening these condyles slightly. Moving it into a protrusive movement. And what we're looking for is the relationship of the molar, maxillary, and mandibular when the articulator is protruded. And you will notice that we have some uh, disocclusion here. The in fact, the uh, anterior teeth are um, creating uh, an opening between the maxillary and the mandibular posterior teeth. Now, this is a good indication that uh, the compensating curve is inadequate. Uh, therefore, we will have to do some uh, modification uh, to these uh, posterior teeth. We have altered the compensating curves now slightly and reestablished a centric occlusion. As I move the articulator now into a protrusive movement, you will notice that the contact does exist between the maxillary and the mandibular posterior teeth. In a working relationship, the contact is still present as it is in a balancing uh, relationship. So the compensating curve is now adequate for the articulation and for the end controlling factors on the articulator. We can now go ahead and set the uh, remaining two posterior uh, maxillary teeth. We'll start with the bicuspid, positioning that uh, in relationship to this cuspid molar, and then very carefully uh, closing the articulator and checking for the alignment of the uh, of the bicuspid, and when it is in its uh, proper uh, relationship, we can now seal the pink base plate wax and the tooth uh, into a position. Careful here not to uh, get the wax over onto the occlusal surfaces of these teeth. We can open that and go ahead and position the second uh, molar. Again, we'll use a small cone of wax and um, place the second molar and very carefully close the articulator again and check the relationship of the molar, maxillary molar, to its uh, antagonist. Again, we can seal that tooth into position. 
we should uh, be very careful to check at this point that we do have uh, buckle overlap, as you see here, and that this, of course, is important to minimize the patient's potential to bite the cheek. Now, with the three maxillary posterior teeth in position, we again can open the articulator and seal these teeth on the lingual surface and then very carefully move the articulator to inspect that the tooth-to-tooth -to -tooth relationship has not been lost. Place a little wax here in the bicuspid region to seal these teeth to the base face. Again now we'll close the articulator and very carefully you can move the articulator into working into a balancing relationship, into a protrusive relationship, again, working, balancing, and protrusive. And you will see that the tooth-to-tooth -tooth contact uh, is available uh, and will be available following processing for uh, equilibration. Now at this point, we can go ahead and we can set the remaining uh, maxillary and mandibular posterior teeth for the patient's try-in. We have finished setting the posterior teeth uh, using the maxillary mandibular zero degree teeth to a balanced occlusal concept and I thought we might review uh, some of the principles used in uh, this particular combination of zero in the lower arch and in the upper arch. You'll recall first of all that we set the bicuspid at the level of the tentative occlusal plane, and we wanted it fairly level, with perhaps the buccal cusp being slightly uh, prominent. Then starting with the molar and progressing back to the second molar, we created both an anterior posterior and a medial lateral curvature. Now, the reason for this curvature was to permit us to comply with the five factors uh, of articulation to uh, produce a balanced occlusal concept. As we close the articulator now, we can look at the tooth uh, arrangement and evaluate what we have been able to accomplish. Uh, in centric occlusion, you will notice that on this side, we have uh, fairly close to a class one molar relationship, although with zero degree teeth, that is not necessary. On the opposite side, uh, we do not have uh, the uh, class one relationship, and I'm just going to turn this to you so that you can see on this side we do not have the uh, class one molar relationship. The maxillary molar is a little bit posterior. Now, if we uh, leave the articulator loosened and move the articulator, you will notice that in a balancing relationship here that the potential for tooth contact uh, exists. In the protrusive movement, uh, we are disoccluding slightly on the second molar, but uh, it is certainly within the range of um, equilibration following uh, processing. And in the uh, working relationship with the zero degree teeth, the buccal cusp of the maxillary tooth uh, becomes the working cusp. Again, we are certainly within the range of adjustability. And this is what uh, is very, very important uh, in this particular uh, tooth in the maxillary and mandibular arch. Now, if we look at the lingual, we'll see uh, again that we have a uh, workable relationship between the maxillary lingual cusp and the lower occlusal surface. Viewing the teeth from the lingual, you'll see that we are uh, able to um, achieve some movement, and then we begin to get a little disocclusion here, which is due to the cuspid rising up in the working movement. In the balancing movement, uh, the contact is certainly uh, what we want and within the range of adjustability. And in the protrusive uh, uh, range of movement, uh, we certainly uh, are within the uh, range of contact. Again, balancing, working, and protrusive. Now that you are assured that the teeth are arranged uh, satisfactorily to achieve uh, the balanced concept, and you have uh, performed some preliminary waxing on the denture, 
uh, you now are prepared to go to the patient uh, for the try-in appointment. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.